Welcome back, everybody, here episode 10 of The Basement Chat. As you see to my left is my special guest, Justin Mooch Moocharelli. And to my right, co-host, Jim Pilla. How we doing? Well, fellas, here we are. Beginning of February. A little basement chat. Talk of that talk, Jim. Talk of that talk. Ten basement chats. Rip. I never thought we'd get this far. No, I didn't think you'd last past two before I knocked you clean out of your sneaks. <laughs> That's right. Well, we've certainly added to things tonight by bringing... Uh, one of the top players in the country, uh, Justin Mooch. Welcome we, to Basement Chat. The reason Thank why you. we really want to Mooch on, aside from his act, actual softball experience, was the level of tattoos. So we complement each other very well. I see that. You're I, running behind. I feel a little left out. And, uh, you should. I Mooch, that job, bud. That's right. We also want to congratulate you on your uh, recent engagement. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you yes. very much. I don't know how she's doing it, but whatever it is, let's get on to it. Me either. Mooch, let's talk about your background a little bit in your career in softball. How did you break into the game, bud? Well, this is uh, it's kind of ironic. Uh, this guy right here found me, him and his brother. I was playing uh, shortstop in the Mercer League. And uh, I don't know. I don't know what it was, the tattoos or whatever, but they picked me up. <laughs> Listen, you touch on the Mercer League back when we when I first met Mooch. God, that got to be almost two decades now. The Mercer League was what is equivalent of tournament softball now during the week. It was doubleheader games. Yep. And every team in the league was a tournament team, and the best of the players from around were in that league. Absolutely. Eight teams stacked the league. Unreal. Yeah, you had some wild games back then. That's that's for sure. Gotcha. So let's continue. We'll do some uh, Q&A here with, with Mooch. Um, Mooch, the first question I have for you, you, you've played with a lot of teammates over the years. Who are some of the very best teammates that you've played with? Um, that's a tough question, too. But, I mean, I've been on a lot of different teams. Um Gotta love my man Rip, played with him for three straight years. Anthony DeFrancesco definitely sticks out in my head. Uh, He's a baller for sure. I mean, a great guy, great player, just all around awesome dude. I would say he's my all around favorite teammate ever. Okay. And plus, he knows every, the best appetizers and desserts anytime you go out to eat. Yes, he does. He does. <laughs> Moose, real quick, just break down for, for everybody who's a viewer here that may not have the opportunity to ever play in the conference. Explain them what the difference between conference ball, I've tried before just to reiterate kind of what I said and your opinion on it because you've been doing it for over a decade solid up there. What is the difference between conference ball and local tournament softball? Everything. Defense, offense, pitching. If you hit 700 in Jersey, which is great, you're hitting 585 in the conference and that's just the truth. The balls, they all get caught and it's it's amazing. I mean, the, the level, the the talent is unreal up there. It really is. Front to back, side to side, there's never a playoff. No, there's not. And you're playing on some of the best fields around anywhere you go. They are definitely uh, up to par. Okay. Uh, speaking of fields, Mooch, some thoughts on the new complex U-Triple-SA's building in uh, Cocoa Beach. Yeah, it's gorgeous. I mean, I've seen the pictures, the layout and everything. My personal opinion, all AstroTurf, that's great for weather, but I wouldn't want to be playing eight, ten games on a weekend on an all-astroturf field, that's for sure. Running around 95 degrees, your feet will definitely have some blisters. Yeah, the the knees don't feel too good afterwards either. Definitely not. Well, nope. you know, being in Florida in late September, early October, you get a lot of rain down there, and I think that's a big uh, reason why they're moving over Absolutely. to the turf. Smart conference. move, so, but like you said, we'll Yeah, we'll stick you at third base when Kyle Pearson gets <laughs> on <laughs> your mind. Mooch, I mean, for a guy who's obviously had the luxury of playing around the country in numerous locations, um, is there one venue that you look forward to going to annually, like you like, hey, no matter what happens in life, I'm going to be here? The Cincinnati Major, without a doubt. That is some ambiance, that's for sure. It's great ambiance. Fields are decent, but they have a treehouse bar in the middle, and it, it's just great atmosphere, and, you know, everybody hangs out. Nobody leaves the park until the last game's done for the night. That's yeah, uh, Brian Wegman's park, I believe. That correct? is correct, yes. Sure, okay, absolutely. Um, I'm sure, sure a lot of guys know. I mean, obviously, you've been fortunate enough to win a numerous amount of championships. Is there one championship that every day when you go to play the game, you're like, man, I remember, bang, and this championship sticks out in your mind more than any other? Yeah, I, it would be last year's with precision. Um, we didn't have the best talent, that's for sure, across compared to the other teams at the AA level. But we got there that weekend, and everybody stepped their game up. Nobody gave us a chance. Nobody even think we'd make it to Sunday, and we just played unreal. Five and zero, run ruled two teams. I just mean, tossing cookies. 
just got everybody out. Just laying them in for everybody. <laughs> and uh, our, our other New Jersey uh, boy, Devin Riley, got involved. A couple big, of big uh, Devin came up, six at bats, six three run homers. I mean, that's why I call him clutch. The automatic, automatic pitch. It's automatic. And because of that, like it. if he's watching, maybe I'll get a raise. So there you yeah, go. Dev, tighten the guy up. Will you, man? Loosen the purse strings. <laughs> Mooch, uh, coming uh, question I really wanted to ask you. Tell me about your approach when you're getting ready to pitch one of these big games, whether it's in the stadium, whether it's in Cincinnati at the Smokies. How do you? What is your mindset going in? I mean, do you study the hitters? Do you study their teams? What is in your head? Well, first thing I think about is try not to get hit every uh, at bat. <laughs> you know, the ball's coming at you a little hard and everything. So I definitely say a prayer first. Um, but I've been around the game a long time. I know a lot of the batters. And that's one thing. I do have a good memory when it comes to that stuff. So I just, I remember the batters. Let's put it that way. You know, okay. it always sticks into my head. So go with that. Would your follow-up question I want to ask for a lot of the young guys at home that may be <coughs> looking to take up pitching or, be, or are pitchers currently, does the umpire and how he calls the game factor into your approach when you're on the mound? Well, first, if you want to be a pitcher, find a new position. <laughs> it's definitely not for you. Trust me. But, uh, yeah, I know the umpires. They all have different strike zones, especially in your trip. It's a, it's, a tough, it's a tough way to umpire. Some let you go through the zone. Some will give you a little bit of mark. Some won't. So, you, same thing. Just like a batter, I have to remember the umpire that's behind the plate and uh, go from there. Okay. Um, Mooch, who are a few players that you think are going to have a big year this year in the conference? Outside of the normal. Of course. Outside of the normal. Can you name three or four players that you would – Keep an eye on this year. And we're talking around the country, not New Jersey or local, in the conference. Yeah, I'm going to start with one of my teammates, John Gastonow. He's only been in the conference three years. He's he's a quiet kid, but he's got all the talent in the world. Can hit a 500 feet, can hit a backside line perfectly. Um, let me think here. It's kind of a, another guy, Precision. My old team picked up a young kid to play the outfield. His name's Travis Hausman. I think he's going to be a factor. We played against him at ASA, actually. Went five for five, three homers. Todd instantly went right up to him and uh, asked him to join the team for next year. That's good stuff. Mooch, let's get to the important question of the night here that I really feel we need to answer. When and are you going to do the slammies? <laughs> I mean, I, stood, I stared at Facebook day after day waiting for the slammies. And you came up empty on me this year. There will be a preseason slamming. I'll be out about March 15th. So. Wow. I'm going to tone it down a little bit, but there will be a slamming. Okay. I won't let them, folks. I promise you I'll duke them on the side. We'll ramp it right back up for you. Have to be uh, basement chat approved, Mooch. We'd love to have you come, <laughs> back, and, uh, come back and do that. Um, Mooch, in your opinion, top four or five hitters in the conference? Pure right. hitters. Right, Canal. Sure. Hands down. B.J. Folk, still at the age of like 42, same thing. Hit one 450, spray one backside. New kid that burst on the steam last year, his name's Eric Canaby. Unreal. Went from a C team, was 80 for 88 to start the year. Boom, the steam picked him up. I would say that's locked in. Yeah, he wound up hitting about 780 till he struggled the rest of the year. So, uh, <laughs> And uh, definitely, without a doubt, Kyle Pearson. He hit a ball by me. Center fielder caught it, and then I threw my glove up. So <laughs> it was definitely a little scary. Interesting. Okay. Now, Mooch, uh, not only do you have a ton of accolades in the men's program, you obviously you have 12 rings, uh, you know, you're out of fingers, but you also dabble a little bit in co-ed, and a lot of our viewers here locally, uh, you know, play co-ed. You've played at the major. Are there any moments that stand out to you from playing co-ed that you might want to share with our uh, basement channel? Yeah, about 10 years ago, I played with the combat mixed team at the uh, Mixed World Series. And Christian Dowling was on the team. And honestly, there was three girls on that team that could play for the Lux Bakery right now, to be honest with you. That's how good they were. That's my praise right there. Man. That's right. Uh, Don Cooper running the combat team, Absolutely. I believe, that yep. year. And I yep. think uh, Junior may have been on that team. Junior, so was, a, junior the, was on the team. I, I actually sort of uh, remember seeing that a picture of that team. It was Big uh, Rusty Baumgartner played, Johnny McGraw, some old names. That's right. Yep. Awesome. Couple of Hall of Famers, I think. No? Yeah, they're gonna, they're in there. <laughs> Mooch, uh, let's talk about the conference this year. I mean, I know you have, you know, who do you in your mind is your team to beat? You got Rismondo with a lot of the guys from last year's World Championship coming over there this year. Um, the Smash and Abacoco faction, which is a lot of the Rismondo guys going that direction. Um, you have Backman, who kind of stayed the same, added a guy or two here. Um, Dan Smith, who was a big time sponsor for a lot of people that don't know, Dan Smith Manessi. 
um, is back into the conference. Um, this year seems to have a lot of the uh, combat guys from years past, plus a lot of new young blood. And, of course, the team you're playing for, New Breed, uh, new breed D. Marini, excuse me, who I think has a whole bunch of talent that is going to be immense trouble on 300-foot fields to play your team. Yes. But if there's one team that you think is going to be the team to beat, just on paper, we're at the Worlds, here it is Saturday, who's in the finals? Uh, Andy Purcell's the X Factor, so i got to give it to Smash It Sports slash the scene. I mean, he's that good. So, And after finishing fifth last year, he's going to have a little chip on his shoulder. Yeah, he plays every inning, whatever, every pitch with a little bit of a chip, and it's a lot of people don't like his demeanor, but you have to admire a guy whose only desire is to win. He's a winner. That's the bottom line. First ballot Hall of Famer, Andy Without Purcell. Without a doubt. Probably okay. the greatest player of all time, hands down. Yeah. And speaking of, of Purcell, uh, Mooch, my next question for you. <coughs> What advice do you have for, for younger pitchers that are either looking to, to break in or maybe move up the ladder? A e, guy who's pitching E that wants to get to D and a guy from D to C. Is there a suggestion or two you would give? Yeah, like I said earlier, find another position, first off. But uh, seriously, everybody always comes up to me and asks me, uh, how do you throw your knuckleball? How do you do this? How do you do that? It doesn't matter. I can tell you the truth every time, which I do. You have to go out there. You have to find what's comfortable for you. And if you don't have a good knuckleball, it's not a big deal. you got to learn to change speeds, move the ball around, 0-2 count, don't throw a pitch five foot outside, make it a biteable pitch, look at the front of the plate, foot off the plate, work the batter. I mean, it's a lot of smarts to be a pitcher. You have to be crazy, but there's definitely, you have to have smarts also. And always, like I said, remember the batter. Always, like, plug it into your head so you know. Okay. Mooch, do you uh, still find time to follow the local scene? Are there any players in New Jersey that you're in, excited to kind of follow this year? I know you're not at many of our tournaments, but I know you're keeping a watch. Tell me a few of the local guys you want to see do well. Well, um, my roommate actually plays for Gabby Construction, and my buddy runs that team, Big Frank Stout, my roommate Chris Mandel. They have a very good team this year. Um, they're going to be a factor. I also think the Lux Bakery is going to be really good. Of course. And anytime you're going to play Bills, Gabby's, Frank's team in Mercer County Park, that's like going into Yankee Stadium and playing the Yankees. It's, that's home field for them. It's tough. Well, so this is a home game. Tough to beat I'm them. Gonna, and they're going to know every crevice of every field. And they're going to be a Bills Old Tavern between you know? and after the games. That's <laughs> yeah, for sure. That's because the food's really good there. Yeah, that too. That's, that's, that's right. <laughs> um, Ripper, you, the next question, I think. I appreciate that, Jim. Thanks. Yeah, good looking out. Thanks. Uh, anything else you want to help me with today? I'll uh, think about it. Butch, real quick, back to the conference, I just want to ask you. Guys know that in the, in the conference, the best gloves, Don Danitas Jr., Lewis Rania. Tell me who you think on the defensive side of the ball in the infield is the most underrated defensive player in the conference. One or two guys if you want, three or four, just so guys have an idea who out to look for besides the same guys that continuously win defensive MVPs. There's two that stand out. Um, New Breeds middle infielder, he's been around three years now. Jeff Flood, unreal with the glove. Smashes it, too, on the offensive side. He definitely hits it. And another young kid, I think he's been in the conference for a year, quiet kid. He's going to make a name for himself. He just got picked up by Dan Smith. His name is Marcus Thornton. So he's somebody to look out for this year. That's good stuff right there. It never hurts to have somebody flesh a lot of me. I'm out there taking missiles at you. I'll take 10 of them. <laughs> also, would you, you've been able to play for some of the best sponsors in the game of softball, obviously. Um, who are a few of the guys who you truly – enjoyed playing for and are thankful that I mean obviously you're thankful of every sponsor there's no doubt because without them we're sitting home doing nothing yep exactly. um, but who are some of the guys that you truly enjoyed a good friendship with and, and really enjoyed playing for two stick out that's your big brother Jerry reporty guy was the best you know he did what didn't have the ton of money for like a big team but he went out there he hustled he got the money uh, he always did the right thing great guy and Secondly, Tony Albacoco. I mean, Tony's the man. That's the bottom line. The guy's the best. I mean, that he is can't get into details, but he is the best. He is. No, I'm sure I have an inkling or two. That's for damn sure. Right. Um, Mooch, some of the uh, better, the best pitchers. We talked a lot about Purcell, but besides Purcell yourself, who do you think are one or two of the other uh, very top-notch pitchers in the conference? Travis Clark, definitely. I mean, he does it both sides also, but he just won a major world last year. Not many guys can say that besides Andy Purcell over the last eight years. Uh, Travis just keeps getting better and better. And Elsie Watson, he's 
he's a decent pitcher also, you know, he, he's going to hit for you, you know, and pitch, and I don't know, that's about it. Which give us some idea, like, like you're sitting home on a couch, or you're doing the spin a Rooney in the living room, <laughs> I mean, where do you come up with some of the crazy pitching deliveries? I know that together, back way back when we used to get up early Sunday mornings, I should say, come home early Sunday mornings together, we'd play up in Elmwood Park League and we'd joke around and I'd be like, hey, try this, try that, and you'd be like, I don't care, whatever, it's just league, but where do you really come up with some of the things you do and some of the antics which you're really known for, which some guys, you know, think it doesn't make a difference, but to guys, we, listen, if it works one time, it works, and that's the reality, but where do you come up with some of the crazy ideas for your pitching deliveries? They just pop it in my head sometimes. All ad lib. It's just, they come to me, I use it, and... Wing it out, and that's it. I'm not scared. No, you no. Know, I think you're half that shit crazy, but I ain't pitching, so it's all right. That's 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 funny. Just a couple more questions, Mooch. Uh, some ways you think me as a, a USSSA uh, state level director can improve the game here in New Jersey? Uh, any ideas you would give me? I think you're doing a great job. I mean, uh, be great to really maybe have a big time super draft here. What I mean by that is get about 12, 16 of the big time players in here. You know, that'll draw, I believe, a big number of people wanting to play with them to actually see what it's like to play with a big timer. So. We'll have to talk about that. We do have the Super Draft listed in October again this year. Okay. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to make that this year. We'll take Absolutely. a look as the uh, year goes along. But uh, that's a great uh, compliment. Thank you very much, Mooch. Yep. Nice of you to say Thanks that. Thanks for it. Thanks for it. <laughs> Mooch, you watch Basement Chat? I mean, like, what, like, what's your opinion of what we do here, honestly? I think it's great. It really does. You know? We just try and make it so everybody that has an opportunity to plays the game may want to sit down and just take a view. We kind of recap everything that goes on. It was always nice to see that somebody who we really as fortunate enough to travel and play at that level can come back home and kind of put on basement chat and see what's kind of going on locally, what the boys are doing. And yeah. uh, a few of the guys at the conference level have watched basement That's chat. That's right. I, 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 shared, I believe I shared the one. Well, I think I shared three of them, but the one that I shared when you gave us the shout-out, me and Devin, for winning the double-A with precision, all of, the whole team, I tagged them in it, and you know they personally – Besides commenting on that on Facebook, they personally reached out to me and said, that's awesome what those guys do. That's so good for the game, and they just are making Jersey softball that much better. Yeah, we're also for hire if anybody wants to do it at the national level. Absolutely. So, you know, just throw it around, just an right. idea. Hey, we're, we're, we are available. Um, so, we'll moving away. from Jim's parole officer, but other than that, we're all right. <laughs> that's right. Is that the brace on? <laughs> I don't know if our uh, camera crew would be able to make the trip, but uh, we'll see. <laughs> um, now, the last few weeks, uh, USSSA, we've been... Uh, able to play indoor ball at the Dome and Diamond Nation, which we'll be continuing to do the next six Saturdays. But we were lucky enough to get outside two weeks ago. Now, both of you guys can uh, vouch, getting outside in January, very tough. We were able to pull it off. A really nice tournament we had up there. Very tough. Right. So that's really, it's January in New Jersey. We're supposed to be shoveling snow. Guys are outside hitting piss rockets and bombs, bud. It was a that's good, a big win. It was a good tournament. I, I have to thank uh, Joe Benanti, uh, Doc, and Gary. They brought a team down, the uh, Thunder Buddies, and they took the championship behind uh, Matt Zerwell uh, from Long Island and yourself, Mooch, on the mound. Uh, tell me about the tournament. You guys had a nice little run. It was good. I mean, it, like you said, it was great to get out there in January. It was a little cold. Thought second uh, twice about it. After I got there. <laughs> That's right. But it was good. Good teams came out. Uh, PSB played good. We beat them in the finals. Sticks always keeps a nice core of guys together for each year. I say that all the time about Sticks. Does. That's for sure. Uh, P PSB was good. And then you had two other teams. Uh, Bill's uh, Old Tavern was up. And uh, Auto Logic from South Jersey. That'll be a team, I think, that'll be a factor in D this year. Uh, Timmy Westerside, Joe Hafner. They've got a nice group of guys as well. They... Uh, they gave a good, uh, good little run up to the semifinals. So we we uh, we may try another outdoor event in February. Um, we're we're not able to have the normal seven game guarantee at Diamond Nation this year Is he because another one in February? we're uh, so <laughs> that's right. We're short one weekend, so Diamond Nation did not have the date for us. However, if we do get another weekend where it's going to be into the fifties, um, you know, we may uh, try another tournament. So stay with tuned. Hand warmers. That's right. With hand warmers, uh, stay tuned uh, for that. I see you outside, maybe a little apron, some hot chocolate. That's you right. Know, maybe a little something cute. So, you maybe know, a just chocolate chip cookie for a big guy. Choke, <laughs> I, Rip, I know that's uh, it's a weakness, Jim. That's it's a, a weakness, weakness for yeah. you, the chocolate chip cookie. So, um, this year, you know, we talked about Joe and, and, and those guys. The above all team, uh, not back with us this year. Rip, where are you hearing these guys are going to be playing this year? Some of the New Jersey guys. None of them. They're all fishing. Hmm. No, I'm just kidding around. Um, I know that a couple of guys for sure are definitely going to the double-A program, a team that Mooch played for last year. It's Precision, center fielder Jay Honowski, better known as Jay Bird, okay. and the state of New Jersey's professional hitter, 
Tom Paterzo, right. and he just flat out murders it. Line to line, line to line. <laughs> yeah. Um, middle infielder Willie Allen's heading to Rack out of New York to play okay. with them. Makes sense. Um, as far as the other guys, I don't know what they're doing. I know it's for Joe. We spoke privately. We're flying down to Miami next <laughs> week. We're looking at a couple of highlight guys. We may get into the highlight field of tournaments as well now. Okay. I'm sure his phone's going to be uh, blowing up right after we air this. Um, so, locally in New Jersey, the teams that we look at here that, that are going to be on the strong side, Rip, obviously you're going to have the Lux and the B program. Uh, with Bills playing C, Assassins, and then we'll get the Max on me and the Chosens coming down. So we should have uh, a few upper-level teams. Listen, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm excited to see what Deluxe brings to the table this year. They've got some of their veterans left and formed their own squad out of Delaware. That's a couple guys have been around this year. So this year for Billy Sampolsky, it's a little bit of a challenge for him because you have, I think, all his core guys are 28 and younger, which is phenomenal for the game of softball in New Jersey. You have a team to be around long-term, Mucci. Yep. But, I mean, you're talking about guys with ample talent, right? Tyler Pecunis, Kyle Green, I'm sure I'm missing some here, Sanchez in the middle, right? Sloop. Sloop Maker's another guy. Another guy they picked up out of Delaware. I call him the big ticket. That's his real nickname, Mike Wilson, who I'm telling you, if you haven't had a chance to see this guy hit a softball, if you're not paying attention, he's going to hit it through your face. Yeah, he murders it. And so, uh, they still have Timmy Bush on the mound, so well, and uh, Jim, pitcher, pitcher. As you well know, anytime you have a guy like that, Timmy's been on the you know, local scene for a number of years and is tournament tested, world tournament tested, world tournament win. It helps. It helps calm the young guys down a little bit to what's going on. They're like, okay, we're going to be okay. Billy's leadership, Bush's experience, a lot of big promise. And the first time I think some of these teams are going to bang heads, Rip, a tournament that you won last year is the uh, guillotine, which is going to be April 22nd in Mercer. We have uh, Fishhead, which is a very good C team from Maryland. Yes. Committed and coming up. I believe Deluxe will be there. I know Gabby's will be there. Yeah, you oh, know? my God. Forget so that. that should be a nice They may camp out, Gabby's. They I heard Pep was getting a little tense. Yeah, a little rumor. I, 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 nothing would surprise me. So uh, that's what we're looking at here at the C program. Also, you have a few of the D teams just to cut. South Jersey Extreme, coached by Luke Force. Some of those teams will probably be playing up uh, with the Cs. Listen, with that tournament, I know it's a little early in the year, but it's a great tournament to get out. Um, the Bulls, we hit are good there. Um, it's a great talent of field. Kind of give you a little early mark to see where you're at to start the year off. Kind of give you just a good measuring stick of what you're up against moving forward. Correct, and then we'll have a different division for the uh, some of the D's as well as the E team, so it'll be not uh, not all mixed. Together. I will tell you this: sleep on Fishhead coming up from Maryland, you're going to get your head beat in. Okay, I'll, I'll tell be, you that now. They can play. I'm going to remember that now, Rip. Just to, to talk a little bit, uh, the D conference we back this year. I jotted down some names, and I, I I just can't wait to watch some of these D conference games. Yeah, listen, it's going to be another exciting year, sponsored by Evo Nine X, right? Evolution of a champion. Um, they were fortunate enough to uh, go ahead and sponsor that D portion of the conference this year. But there is some teams this year that are coming back. You have your PSB Sticks team, um, South Jersey Stream, Mr. Forrest. That's right. Um, the Just a Cut guys are coming back, right? Mike Perone and, and those guys. And when they're at the <laughs> tournament, tournament, they have their team. They can play with anyone. Listen, Final I've, Four in the high low last year. I've said that forever about Just a Cut. So, listen, let's see what happens. Then you have teams that are moving up from the E level this year, I think, that are going to pose a lot of problems, Jim, to the T teams. Give me your 10 guys. Your Broad Street Bullies, right? He's Irish That's right. pub, my moving boys. Uh, wrap it up's moving up. Coach Smitty Holla, they're moving up. And then you have Dream Warren, who got hot last year. At, towards the end of the year, kind of let him go a little bit in Worlds. But I'm sure with the experience under their belt, they're going to be good. And, I mean, Mooch, you know about the PSB boys and the South Jersey Extreme teams. Yeah, they get it done every year. Now, uh, aside from the teams you guys mentioned, there's a few other teams. Auto Logic we talked about before. I'm also very excited to see Blend Bar, Speedy Pete's play this year. Uh, TJ Shemley is picking up some of the raw talent guys from what I see, as well as some of the Central Jersey Beer Festival guys. So that's my sleeper team. Uh, is that a German team? Uh, beer Festival? Just curious. That, that, that it's a partially uh, German beer festival. Okay. Um, Autologic, we talked about, and also Showtime's playing some U-Triple-S-A this year. So, Dogs team. Uh, the big dog, yes, uh, number 14. So... Showtime, um, they'll be uh, in that in that mix. I'm really looking forward. I wrote down, Rip, 11 or 12 teams. I would buy a ticket to watch the D Conference this year. It's, it's going to be that good. Well, fortunately so. for me, I don't have to buy tickets. I got, the, I got the always permitted card. That's right. But I am excited to do it. I'm actually excited to see what Showtime does this year because Dog runs a tight camp. He does. You know what I mean? And he's, he's not going to let his guys go out there and not play it properly. So I'm, I'm very excited to see what they do. You know, I'm excited to see what 10 guys does at a, at a a little higher level. And there will be an e-conference. We'll, we'll get back to the e-conference in the next chat, but there's definitely some teams that have reached out. Uh, the East Shore Red Eye from Delaware will be back in that. Um, 
E-Conference will have Lunar Steel will be playing there. Waka, new to you, SSA this year. So um, there's going to be a lot of action both in the D and in the E-Conference level. Um, Rip, I think that's going to take us to the mailbag. To the mailbag. Are, are you ready? Close, close almost. Okay. Let me, get a, swig, is, uh, let me get a little swig of the sacrament. <laughs> you might, you might Arnold Palmer, half and half. Anybody wants to pick one up for me, let me know. Yeah, Rip, as you know, I... Uh, I, I drink uh, Coca-Cola. Right, Jim. It's better to drink it than snort it. That's correct. I've, yeah. I've uh, switched <laughs> completely from Pepsi. Gotcha. Um, Rip, this first question comes from uh, our good friend uh, Mike Orioles out in Pennsylvania. Rip, buddy, there are rumors of you hanging it up going into this season. Say it ain't so. Your <coughs> pal, Mike Orioles. I'll be honest with you. I haven't fully decided what I really want to do yet. I know I have an, an immense commitment to a girls' team that I put together. That's right. Um, all our brats. Right. Which is my first commitment before anything else. I made a promise to the girls that I would do it with them. They yeah. are way talent related. Um, I may even enter them in an immense tournament to see if we can win that. <laughs> um, but they are extremely talent loaded. As far as exactly what my commitment is to playing right now, I haven't made a 100% decision, so I wouldn't say anything. Although I do have a beautiful motorcycle at home that is begging me to ride the brakes off it this year as opposed to spending every weekend at the Ball Diamond. There you go. And your girls will be playing in the overnight tournament this Saturday at Diamond Nation. Yes. And uh, we should look out because I know Evo 9X is going to have a presence Saturday night at the Dome. Yes, so we definitely will. That's anybody's sure. coming, some, some, uh, of our gear. some of the gear. Come down, check it out. We'll have our sales reps there on hand. Okay, now this question is for Rip, but I, I'd like to hear uh, you know Mooch's thoughts on this, this question. Rip. I'm wondering if you watched the live stream on our indoor victory last week at the Dome. It felt really good to see the guys pull an upset and crush some bombs. The only problem is they kept walking around me to pitch to Cookie. Should teams be allowed to walk power hitters like myself in indoor Dome Ball events? Your friend, G Money. First of all, let me just premise this by saying... Gee, buddy, I think the finals are like 4 or 5 a.m. Those years for me are probably way past. I'm not up at them hours unless I'm running to the bathroom um, or I'm doing something that probably shouldn't be live streamed, if you know what I mean. Um, so, no, I didn't watch it. To answer your question, um, being a, a guy who has a little bit of power myself, I kind of take it as a sign of respect if somebody pitches around you a little bit. Um, I, first of all, can't believe that Mooch hasn't picked you up yet for New Breed or giving you an opportunity. Mooch. It's coming, buddy. I'm telling you. Just keep working on your game. You know what I mean? But listen, if, uh, they, if they want to pitch around you, I mean, being a team guy is being a team guy, bud. You just got to lay the bat down, look at the next guy and pray he gets a hit, you know? Because if he don't hit behind you, these shoes were made for walking. I'm telling you, mark my words. First guy you're going to see go from E to double A. Just keep hitting, G-Money. Money, money, money! G-Money! <laughs> okay, getting back seriously, Rip, here. There was an anonymous question sent in. Rip. Any truth to the rumors that TNT and Assassins may combine this year? There's some speculation. <laughs> there's some speculation. There is some conversation ongoing. Um, there's some things that need to be hammered out and stuff like that. So there is a possible truth to the rumor. Um, how much it comes to fruition or have substance uh, really will depend on the next couple of weeks. Okay. Always an interesting off season. Never. Never a dull moment. Yeah, well, a lot of it has to do with a lot of people just, you know, I hate to say this, you have sponsors that sponsor the game. Sometimes we should check ourselves before we go ahead and make decisions. I, very wise words from a very wise man, Mr. Rip. Okay, now, the next question comes from uh, Dusty Reynolds. Rip. Is that a wrestler? It's a real life person. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Dusty Rhodes, the American Dream, <laughs> uh, is no longer with us. Yeah. Oh, oh, wow. Sorry about that. I got I thought we were going to uh, ambush Mooch after this and give him a uh, concerto. Oh, okay. He's um, on that freaky shit. Good. Rip, uh, would you think that a few more U-Triple-SA leagues on weeknights would be beneficial to the tournament players to better their game? The only way I think it's of any kind of benefit is if the pitching rules apply. If the pitching rules don't apply, it's no different than any other league. It's here you go, hit it. For really to have any benefit for anybody playing in those leagues, it needs to have those pitching rules apply. Let guys go out there, juke, and just to kind of get to that timing because when you're playing in a normal pitch league, the timing's very simple. A guy puts his hand back, <coughs> ball comes forward. And we do have some leagues. We run a U Triple S league in Lakewood, we run one in Linden, and then we have about five or six leagues throughout the state, but they don't play the, the pitching rule. So while they're sanctioned through U Triple S A for insurance, um, validates my point. Uh, that's right. They're useless. They're, yeah, exactly. So um, I know you're a big BP guy, Rip, so I mean, yes. maybe that would be better than uh, league ball. So. Yeah, that's true. 
And then the last question, other than uh, obviously uh, Kyle Adams requested a, a shout out, so we'll, that's my we'll, boy we'll right get, there. We'll get back to that and uh, Jimmer Stick as well, uh, selling them Jimmer Sticks. To look yeah, I'm not a big out. weight room guy, but I've seen a lot of guys use them, and I understand that they're very good. I, listen, you want to get loose on deck? I mean, swing a five pound stick, they've loosened up that guys. But I, I understand. You know. it. I only buy my equipment from Core Softball Sales, Todd Lapoidovin, one of the best uh, right. bat dealers around. But uh, Jimmer Sticks a good product as well. Last question is from Bill Shalcross, okay, from the Broad Street Bullies. Rip, how do you think the early part of the season will shape up with the mergers and teams being formed at the higher levels? I'll be honest with you, Bill. To be honest with you, um, it's too early to tell. I mean, when you start merging guys, and Mooch can vouch for me here when I say this to you, you're taking guys who have an ego over here and a guy who have an ego over here, and you put them together. If those guys don't mesh well, I don't care how much talent you have you're not going to win. I'd rather have a group of guys who play together consistently. Year after year, you start to build camaraderie. Everybody knows what the next guy's thinking. I mean, Mooch, tell me if I'm wrong here. I mean, yeah, you can have guys that are ultra talented. We're not talking about the major level. But when you start getting down to the B, C, D level, and you try and merge that much talent, there has to be a little bit of I give up a little bit, you give up a little bit, and to merge together and really make it work. There's no lion team. That's true, but there's half of me. All right. right. <laughs> now, uh, before we close out, guys, any predictions the Super Bowl on Sunday? Uh, what do you guys like? I'm going to tell you the truth. I like 0, 7, 6, 4, 5, 8, and I forget what other pools I'm in. That's what I'm really looking <laughs> for. Um, I had an opportunity to go to the Super Bowl a couple years ago when the uh, Patriots played the Seahawks. Okay. It's hard to bet against Tom Brady and that psycho he's psycho genius he's with, Bill Belichick. That's right. Although I would like to see Matty Ice put it on their asses, i got to be honest with you. I, I am rooting uh, very hard for Matty Ice, as, as you know from following my uh, my social media. Yeah, but you're just a Tom Brady hater because you're, unfortunately for you, you're a Jets fan. That's right, you know, and, and I don't like cheaters either. Hey, sometimes you know, everybody's got to root for a loser, but, Jim. Can't go uh, against Brady. He cannot. New, New England by 10. Boom, New England by 10. Okay. and then That's, he, uh, that's for you, Beav. I'm taking the, I'm taking the Falcons by 27. I'm just looking to see. Go ahead and cover Julio Jones. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. I'm just looking to see some of these commercials, and uh, hopefully, I won't be uh, forced to watch the Puppy Bowl this year. No, no, no. The Lingerie Bowl is a different story, though, for you, Jim. I know you got that DVR, my man. That's right. My favorite commercials got to be the Doritos commercials. Always something good, or the Clydesdale Budweiser ones, Moochie Bob. Oh yeah, there you go. Exactly. Rip, take us home. Um, hey, listen. Um, I appreciate everybody tuning in as always. Um, we do have a big announcement, I just want to let you know, I'm sitting to my left, as I said in the earlier program, is Justin Mucciarelli. Um, it's an honor for me, for a guy who's known the guy for a long time, we've had a good frichip, you know, uh, uh, through the years. Mooch has signed on with Evo 9X as part of our evolution as a championship series. He's going to be one of our initial signature players, so Mooch, as a token of our appreciation from us at Evo 9X, to answer a lot of folks' question, our, for, uh, one of our first two signees. My man, Justin Mooch, right here. Our honor, my man. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thanks, bud. You got it, bud. This is all yours. Take it home. Thank, Thank you, bud. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mohammed. Go. Congratulations. That's it, folks. Be sure to tune back in again, and we'll see you shortly. Thanks for watching. Go Falcons. <laughs>